if we could start with regular business. So if you could, uh, Francis, do your w WLS report. Oh, okay, very well. I know you have a long agenda, so I don't intend to take too much time. Um, the, uh, the, the board met uh, last Thursday or two Thursdays ago. We meet every the last Thursday of, uh, of the month. Um, the, the preoccupation with, in the board continues to be with COVID. What else is COVID? Um, the impact that is having on, uh, on our libraries, the operations of the libraries, uh, the impact of the staff uh, on, on a service to, to, uh, uh, to our patrons. Uh, this to be the gen seems to be the general preoccupation that we have. Uh, and the second area of concern that I have noticed in, in, the, in the board is, um, is uh, the concern that is being expressed by many uh, directors about uh, possible budget cuts because of the pandemic. Uh, will the budget be cut? And if it's done by how much, 5%, 10%, et cetera. Um, and what that is going to mean uh, for the staff and the services that the libraries will be providing uh, to the patrons, uh, et cetera, and how they can adjust to that. The directors meet every, every Thursday, 9.30, uh, for a chat, and, and I attend that on behalf of the, um, of the board, and I'm always impressed by the, the friendship and the, the frank exchange uh, among the library and the directors about uh, the issues and the problems and the concerns that they that they have uh, coping with uh, the current situation and exchanging views and and supporting each other. So uh, that that seems to be the the main area uh, at the moment. The third um, thing that is concerning the board right now is the, of course, we are waiting for the <laughs> final outcome of the audit reports. You know, the audit reports are being discussed at the working group and I understand that the discussions there is going well. Um, started off uh, pretty <laughs> uh, strongly at the beginning, but uh, I understand this is progressing well. But in any case, we, the board is still waiting to see what the final outcome is going to be when it's submitted to, to, to us. But in the meantime, um, I understand, no, we understand that the, um, Within the uh, the working group, the WLS, the IT uh, department, as well as the library, the, the directors are working on on drafting a service level agreement with each uh, library. Um, that that is going reasonably well. And uh, talking informally to our director, I understand is is pretty satisfied with, with with the way things are going in that. And also I understand that the uh, IT department is in the process of purchasing a new help desk solution system, uh, which will be suspected to better the support that, that is provided to, uh, to, to our libraries. Uh, that, that's a good thing. Um, and when that is purchased or it's ready, I understand it's going to be tested. And, and if uh, it proves it's worth, then it should be in operation. So that, that should improve things. Uh, and the IT is also uh, following up on a, a number of recommendations that have been made on the virtual uh, desktop infrastructure, VDI, uh, different recommendations that have been made by the, by the auditors. So that is also being followed up. One thing that I find of great interest to me personally, and I'm sure to you also, is that uh, the WLS is working closely with the Westchester County Department of Mental Health on a project to provide uh, emotional support and assistance to individuals within the country, in the county who are affected by the pandemic. Uh, and everybody, most people have been affected by this pandemic in a variety of ways, uh, emotionally uh, uh, and in, in every sense, financially, uh, I, people are isolated, people are anxious, people don't know what the future holds and uh, who might fall sick in the family and what it means. And then it, it, there's a lot of worry out there. Um, and, and, and the fact that uh, the county as a program, which I understand is financed by, by FEMA, uh, 
is addressing this issue in collaboration with the, our library and the uh, with WLS and, and other non-governmental uh, organization and profit organizations within the country. That, that's a good thing. Um, I don't know to what extent our library is involved in that, but uh, this, this, is, this project is, is very good and the Lord supports it. It's called Project Hope. Um, the last thing I want to say is that there are many things I could go into, but uh, tomorrow morning I'll be circulating the, the, the latest report by the executive director about the activities of WLS, uh, which is quite detailed and, and, and you'll find all the information in, in, in there. So lastly, uh, and I'd like to thank our director for, for doing that, the WLS is, will be uh so we'll be holding a 61st annual meeting next thursday uh from 9 30 to uh, 10 or whatever it is uh and it will be done virtually so um the director has circulated that uh, to all of you so it would be nice if you have a moment uh to to tune in it'll be virtual so you can have your coffee and listen to the, the discussions the uh, executive director will will make an introductory statement, and then our own uh, president, the board, will say something, and then discussions will 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 start. So it shouldn't go more than beyond eleven in the morning. So I would like to invite you for that. I think that's all I have to say at the moment. Um, if there's any questions you'd like to ask, I'll be prepared to answer that. Thanks. Thank you so much, Francis. Does anybody have any questions? No. No. Okay. Thank you. Yep. Uh, I do not have a report today, um, but I know that um, our director does. So we will go to director's report. Thank you, Deirdre. And um, Francis, excellent report. Um, just want to compliment you. The the information you shared each meeting is, is very helpful. So thank you for that. Um, our, my report really relates to um, the events of Friday and our um, subsequent um, decisions. Um, and I should tell you, as you all know, uh, our library, we were informed on a Friday afternoon that one of our staff members um, unfortunately contracted COVID-19. And um, this person, is a part-time person and was in on Thursday and apparently was feeling fine. But when that person woke up the following day, Friday, um, felt ill, flu-like symptoms, had a rapid test and discovered that they, that, um, that uh, sh she was ill and then um, did another test a few days later to confirm that. So when we were notified, I took action, it was, um, as you can imagine, um, upsetting. Obviously, it's something that we've all been worrying about. You know what would happen in the in the work site if um, if indeed this did occur, and it seemed it to us that at some point it might likely uh, happen, and it did. But um, I was able to uh, um, connect with um, the state and the county health folks relative to COVID nineteen. They were available, they provided great information and helped me um, formulate a tentative um, a approach in which then I spoke with Deidre who was right on it and then the board to confirm. And so we went forward and of course what we decided was that the library must be closed um, starting the following day, Saturday of last week. And we would be closed through a Wednesday with the idea of reopening on Thursday. Um, in the meanwhile, while we were closed, we were urging um, the staff members in the circulation area, um, who, which is the area where that um, staff member that was taken ill worked um, to get tested. And meanwhile, just generally recommended to our staff that they should get tested, not, not obviously knowing what, um, whether or not they were ex exposed to this person, you know, directly or indirectly. And um, uh, that went forward. And we also decided to do a deep clean 
of the circulation area the following day. Um, and our cleaning service was right on it and did so by nine o'clock in the morning, which was really important. So we, I then scheduled a Zoom meeting with all department heads for Saturday um, on um, th that next day. And we had a very good, frank, open discussion. No one was panicking, everyone was thoughtful. And one of the um, things that came out of this meeting was that um, given the um, time frame for getting answers to um, having been tested, perhaps we might want to push the reopening date back later so that we could be safe amongst ourselves and be safe working with members of the public. So we then moved um, the reopening to um, this upcoming Monday, which I believe is the 16th of November, um, pending any set of circumstances. And um, since then, we, 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 we were open, we were fielding voicemail um, questions. We were continuing to do our virtual program. We left our book drops open. Our custodians were entering into the building and at HCL to remove the material, uh, put them in um, sort of bins that marked out the day because of course we are waiting four days before we touch any items. Um, so we were functioning even though not um, as well as we had been up to uh, of that Friday. Um, the good news is that I've been in touch with um, our supervisors and our staff. Many people have been tested and to date, knock on wood, no one else has a positive COVID-19 diagnosis, which is terrific. Um, so we have another Zoom meeting scheduled for Saturday and I'm hoping that um, pending this good news continues, uh, we will be able to reopen on Monday. The one thing I do wanna to mention to the board and I will talk about it with our department heads on Saturday is um, indeed we were lucky and we will be able to go forward and open the building and allow patrons to um, restart their visits. But given that we are about to face three holidays that bring families together, Thanksgiving, Hanukkah, and Christmas, and of course, New Year's Eve, um, and, and the fact that the numbers are spiraling upward, I want to talk with the staff about um, the possibility of, of retrenching some of our hours, et cetera, uh, just because I feel like we're coming into a very dangerous time period. And while I do believe the building should stay open, I am thinking that possibly we might consider restricting some of our hours. Um, and so I'm not quite sure where that, where that will go, but I did want to share with you that that is something that I have in the back of my mind and I'd like to discuss with staff. As I said, we would continue um, being open to receive public visits. We would continue curbside, which now more than ever seems important, but we're concerned. We're concerned about um, our health and our family's health and also uh, members of the public. Um, we don't want to contaminate them, don't want the same either. So this is sort of the direction we're going in with no firm decisions yet made. Um, and I'm happy to talk about that at this point in time, or I can continue with my pretty um, brief report. Just one thing, when I had talked to, and, and um, I do wanna thank the board members because we were able, Tom and I talked and we he said, I said, okay, let's break up the list and we'll call everybody. And we were able to get to you all within a matter of, I mean, 15, 20 minutes. So I wanna thank everybody for their availability um, given the subject matter. Um, one thing when I had talked to Dan, we talked about the need for perhaps the those that were um, in contact with the person who did have test positive, they there might be a need for them to get tested twice. So is that still um, a directive to them? Or? Yeah, I've, I've okay. asked the staff, and it's mostly a circulation folks, yeah. that they may need to go back again yeah. this week. And get yeah, it's, it's usually after uh, four to five days. Um, 
if in the event that you were in close proximity more than 15 uh, minutes with a person that has tested positive or traveling and, and whatnot. So the, I, I would just- say that again, Daniel? Sorry. It's usually if you're next to somebody that tested positive for more than 15 minutes, um, they, you may not feel symptoms right away. So just because this, this staff person was there and other, other staff people were there, it doesn't mean that they're not getting symptoms right now. Uh, symptoms can occur within four to five days of exposure. So even though they may have gotten tested, it usually takes two to three days to get your results. You should get tested again on the fourth day, fifth day, just to be clear um, um, that any symptoms may have, have, have you know, risen or they may have tested positive, but be asymptomatic. Now, what's so the I think, what's the, um, no, just if you've been with somebody like for 15 minutes or more. So yes. like in their presence. So if I was right. in your house. Right. Close, close proximity. They for 15 both minutes. State and the county. Correct. That as Daniel said, if you are exposed to somebody for 15 minutes or longer and, and, and at least six feet of distance or closer, and of course mm -hmm. masks, which we all had, then you should consider getting retested. Lots of our staff, um, they, the exposure was Thursday. Many, not all, but many of our staff got tested on Monday, which okay. was a little bit later, you know. Yeah. But yeah. I think people in the circulation area who had um, that kind of close contact, they're going to get tested again. Yeah, I think I saw that in your directive, actually. I think you did say they'll get tested twice in the, in the documentation that you sent out. But I just want to make sure Daniel know that we were, Daniel knew that we were, we had followed up on that. Yeah, I, I have a quick question in regards to, especially with, with the holidays, and I know that's always something yeah. that com comes up. Um, is there any directive on that as far as like protocol? I know the governor has put some, some protocols in regards to entering, uh, flying out, having to come back with a, um, you know, with a test. I believe that's something like you have to get to get a, a test and get a negative back, and then you have to quarantine for like uh, three days and then get retested. Or it's an honor system too. Well, you know, yeah. Dan, that's a good question, and we have been sort of dealing with this issue since we returned to the building. And um, we as a library cannot um, tell people where to go, where to vacation, to visit family um, further away or not. But we've been very clear because I've had a number of conversations with staff. I've spoken to our attorney. If someone um, vacation leaves and visits another area that has a, um, um, you know, has a very high uh, COVID-19 test case, we advise them that when they come back, they must quarantine for 14 days and, um, um, and um, they must come back with um, a, a, a test uh, result that shows that they're negative and that that test result is, um, is not immediate upon their return, but at least a week after. So, you know, so, it, so the, the question is about that, does that, so I'm, I'm an employee, I decide to go to Florida, I go there for five days, I come back, I have to quarantine, does that, is that quarantine taken that, that because it was a dec decision of the employee uh, right. to, to, to do that, it wasn't like the library sent them for work purposes, um, was that deducted from their additional vacation and sick time? Is that, I mean, I, I know companies are, are doing that. Some companies are not. No, we were told by our attorney because I very specifically asked that because mm -hmm. I, I admit I, I found it frustrating if someone took a vacation in a, in a, in a pod zone and would mm -hmm. come back and, you know, they, they do indeed have to be paid what we've tried to do in those instances, and they've been very, very few, despite um, the intentions of some staff um, relative to consider, um, we've said we would want you to work from home. We'll try to give you work that would keep you busy as much as possible. Okay. Um, 
Tom, can I suggest, um, you know, our next meeting is during the holiday seasons. It's uh, the second week in December. I feel real comfortable though, uh, if, um, and perhaps you could distribute something um, to the board, uh, but I really feel comfortable if you had a plan um, for how we are going to, um, how we're going to respond to the holidays. Are we going to change our hours? Are we not? And I leave it to you guys to make that decision. Um, but given that there's an uptick, um, given that the schools, like every week a school is closed, like uh, every week there's a pot, there's like a cohort out. Given all that, if you guys could just put some thought into it and um, whatever recommendation you come up with, and, and really you're gonna do it. It's not even a recommendation to us at this point because we're not gonna see you till um, December. But if you could, um, you know, if you could let us know what you're going to do in response, that would be great. Certainly. Um, Thanks. And I could have a better sense of things after our meeting on Saturday. Okay. Because I think it's incumbent upon us to make a decision prior to the onset of the Thanksgiving holiday and to um, um, go continue in that direction as we move forward. Now, however, if things get even progressively worse, um, we may um, uh, limit more hours, we may go to curbside, we may do a number of things, but absolutely, I will make available to you and the board um, our uh, plan to, 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 to deal with this pandemic and its, uh, its increase. Thank you. Makes sense, thank you. Yeah, it looks like Corey has a question, yeah. Yes, so Tom, I just wanna understand the steps you took. The, person reported into you or how did you how are you guys made aware um the the staff member reported to her immediate supervisor okay. on friday Corey, mm -hmm. and then that supervisor called me immediately on a late friday afternoon i was still in the building mm -hmm. and um and then from there what i did was um i actually talked to another library that shared the staff member and found out what they were doing. I was kind of curious to hear that. Um, mm -hmm. And then I called the New York State COVID Healthline and spoke to someone. And I also spoke to, it was amazing, uh, but I got through to the County Health Department about nearly 4.30 and had a good long conversation with those people. And I just wanted to, because things are shifting and changing all the time, um, I um, ascertained, I, I described our situation and asked what, um, what is expected of an organization like ours, given that one of our staff members had taken ill. And they both gave me essentially the same information, which made it very handy. And then from there, I kind of put something together and I, 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 I spoke with the uh, su su supervisor of circulation just to confirm some um, issues. And then I reached out to Deirdre because Deirdre as the board president um, needed to know immediately that this was a scenario and I needed her um, um, input, her, her thoughts and support um, or changes to go forward with this program. And we put it together pretty quickly. And as Deidre indicated, we fanned out and made phone calls to board members to ask if they could agree with this approach. You all were amazingly available in a short period of time on a Friday night. Um, and then- We ain't got nothing going on. Yeah, well, I know it's not like the old days. <laughs> we're, all, we're, we're all sort of um, wallflowers these days. Uh, but, um, and then what I did was I um, put together an email to supervisors. I um, reached out to our cleaning service, set that up. I reached out to our guard company to tell them of the news. And, um, and of course I worked with Barbara Davis, who was very helpful. Um, you know, I reached out at um, 7.30, quarter to eight. And she said, you, can, can you write a statement? And then I'll take it and uh, send it out through social media, website, et cetera. Um, and we did, we had signs created, we changed our phone message. So we were, I'm really proud of how 
we responded um, really quickly, efficiently um, to this. Okay, and so, and I'm just asking because this is all new and I just want to be aware and get some education here. So did you have to use any of the tools that the state had said we needed to use like contact tracing or any, were any of those no. tools applicable? No, it's interesting, Corey. That's a great question because I thought, what is our status re relative to that? And what I was told by the county was that um, I said, do we need to do contact tracing? And um, uh, the woman from the county health department said, no, this is something that we will follow up with the um, a staff member that was infected. And I said, well, okay, um, if you need our input and assistance, this is my name, this is how you can reach me, but haven't heard anything since then. The way I understand it, Corey, is that the county does the contact tracing. Um, that's the way I've understood it. And did you give them logs, Tom? No, we do not keep logs of, of patrons, do not. So how would they, Deirdre, how would they do that? They do it with the staff. They're not doing it with the public. They're just doing it with the staff. I mean, that's how I've always understood it. And even from the schools, I understand that, that the county then works with the individual who's had, well, this is how it is with everybody, who's had, who's tested positive. And then that person tells them, this is who I've seen, this is who I've seen. This. So it, it, it wraps around that person. The county wraps around that person. But we don't know in terms of contact tracing for the public, that's a no. We, we are not gonna know who, if that person was in any contact with anybody in the public. Well, I was right. thinking anyone that came to the library. Right. And may have on that one day when she worked yeah. because it was only one day out of the week, ironically mm -hmm. enough. We, we don't mm -hmm. keep a log. No, we don't. It's a, actually, it's been a, a longstanding issue in, in libraries, public libraries, particularly a matter of confidentiality. Reality, yeah. Right. Okay. Yeah. All right. But I was, I, it, was okay. good, it was a good lesson to know that the county was managing it and working with the staff member who yeah. then would furnish all the names. And we didn't have to use uh, the city. So it was county, state, and the library, and that was it. Right. The city doesn't really have a health department. The uh -huh. county has the health department. Gotcha. Um, and so they don't really have an, any kind of role. Got it. OK, thank you. I appreciate that. Well, you know, Corey, I'll be honest with you. It's an education for all of us. Oh, yeah, I'm learning. That's what I'm asking. Yeah. OK. Uh, um, so hey, no, I, I, Francis, I'm sorry. I, I, no, I just like, like to commend the way the director handled this. I've been following it from the sidelines and um, and the issuance of the press release and everything else. I think that that was really commendable uh, on your part. I talked to some of my colleagues the board and uh, I think uh, they, were, they were quite uh, quite impressed. I, I agree. Yeah, you handled it better. Yeah, I, I definitely agree too. And agree. And, and Corey, and just to, to ch chime in, because I, I think I know where what, what you're, you're asking. I can give an example. At, at my site, we do do a, uh, I mean, literally every client that comes in, we're asking four or five questions and we do temperature checks. Um, and that's because that's, that's the Department of Health is not requiring it, but we do it more of internally um, because we do get clients that uh, perhaps uh, may be homeless um, and then they go to like the Oasis shelter. So we're able to kind of like know who was in the vicinity or, or with the staff person and, and so forth. So it, 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 it kind of funnels it more even deeper to to our own contact tracing, where we're able to kind of give that information to the Department of Health, if anything. Okay. You know, the irony here is, just following up from Dan's comments, we still continue um, to take the temperature of every staff member that comes in. And there's been a few occasions when we've sent people home. Now, um, it's my understanding um, that our staff member was tested on Thursday and um, that, um, the temperature did not hit that number that would invoke um, asking the person to, to go home. So it's, it's not a perfect um, system. No, I think the temperature check from my perspective is just, well, in the schools, it's important because you know, 
any of us who are parents know, you know, those are, there are days when you kind of give them Tylenol and send them to school before COVID. It was like, give them Tylenol. So, so I think for schools, it might make a little sense because, you know, people try to slip and slide because we have to. But I do think sometimes that the temperature check is more for our own sense of security than really does it, you know, I don't know if it's always going to catch stuff. And, and in this case, it didn't. It, it didn't. It didn't. Yeah. Um, but oh, yeah, just in case I miss anything, uh, how, how is this staff member now anyway? Yeah, is she on the road to recovery? She's feeling better. Okay. Yeah, she's doing better. I have been not in contact with, with her, but um, our supervisor has been. Good. But it's a tremendous relief, I have to tell you. Oh, okay, As yeah. I've been hearing from staff over the week, you know, I got my test. It was negative, negative, negative. It was uh, music to my ears, you know. Yeah, because it can, when it starts to, you know, explode, it explodes. It can be really, you know, problematic. Yeah, we just didn't know what we would be facing. Um, and what's ironic is uh, we made our announcement and of course, Port Chester did too. And then Yonkers Will Branch did as well. And then Dobbs Ferry did too. So we're not the only library that is closed due to COVID. It's be ramping up which is why I, we really want to look at what we're doing um, in the short-term future in order to maybe mitigate um, this kind of situation happening again and happening in a far worse way. Um, if we're done with that for the time being, I just have a few brief things to share, mostly related to our ongoing grant scenario. Um, as you folks know, we are moving forward with the phase one um, renovation of the second floor and have made some very nice changes. Our new um, Spanish language area has been reconfigured. It looks great. It's on the second floor. Um, if, if you, when we open, maybe you might wanna take a look at it. Um, and other areas are changing too as well. And, and more to come actually, we have a fair amount of furniture that we're, we have not accepted because there are chairs and tables and we're trying to keep that out of the public eye, uh, given what's going on. Um, the, the two grants for this year, the second floor renovation phase two, it's a large grant over $300,000 and the replacement of the stairwell at the Children's Huguenot Library between the first floor and the basement lower level. Those grants have not come in yet and it's, um, it's because of COVID, but they're very, very late. Um, later than we've ever seen. Usually they straggle in in late September or early October, but it's mid-November and they have not arrived, but that's fine. Um, uh, we're, we're moving forward in other areas. And um, that's really it as far as my personnel report is concerned. Okay. Am I muted now? Okay, great. Um, we're going to go to committee reports and they're not gonna be many because most you know, two people are not here. Um, I'm not planning for a building and grounds uh, report unless uh, anybody is telling me I need to do one. Uh, community relations, Dan, you got anything? He's on mute. Okay, I'll come back to him. Um, finance committee? Nothing here, sorry. Okay, finance committee? I don't think we have a, I'm the, I think I'm the chair of the finance committee. I don't think we have a, Corey, you've been looking at the RFP, right? The yeah, RFP for yeah, banking we had to push services. That back. Yeah, we had to push that meeting back because of the um, issue at the library. It was okay. supposed to, we were supposed to meet Friday afternoon. Friday at four o'clock. <laughs> four o'clock, right. So. Okay. Uh, but actually, Corey, Gene and I spoke today and we're okay. going to, we're going to reach out to you. Um, okay. Maybe find a date next week to go over it. Yeah, that'll be great. Okay. Um, you know, I do have to do a resolution. Um, so let me get to the end and I'll do my resolution. But personnel committee, I do have something on the personnel committee. Um, uh, we actually, um, last week, I, th I mean, last month, we talked about, was it last month we did a resolution? Um, we did last month for... Um, the position that was um, Barbara Davis's, which is changing, as as well as 
the um, the the position for the upgrade for the outreach coordinator and um, the third position, which was the program theater and um, um, art gallery position. But we did not do a resolution regarding um, 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 uh, the uh, social media videographer coordinator. And as you might recall, with the retirement of Roxanne Mapp, who we will miss, like Barbara Davis will tremendously miss, um, we felt given the way things have changed, um, we didn't need to fill that position. We could add those duties to um, the social media coordinator who is Nicolette Fudge, who's done a phenomenal job since she came here. And particularly during the beginning of this COVID-19, she worked very hard hand in hand with Barbara Davis to keep the community and ourselves up to date. Her, she has a graphic arts background and we had agreed to add that to her duties as an upgrade and provide a salary bump up too. And oh. so we did not do a resolution about that. So I'm asking for the personnel committee to make that resolution available to the board. So I'd like to make a resolution or I'd like to make a motion to upgrade the position for Nicolette Fudge, who is our social media person, um, to include some of the duties that uh, became available when um, Barbara Davis and Roxanne left um, and to upgrade her. She's not changing grades or anything. It's she just- will, She will go up to a librarian one salary grade, which was the grade that um, uh, Roxanne- Roxanne now, was at. Right, so it's 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 a bump up in salary, but it's um, not a huge one and it's yep. well-deserved. So I'm. Uh, can I get a second on that motion? Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Thank you. Uh, so that was um, my personnel one. And let me just do one more. Uh, did you happen to type that out at all? Uh, you know, I, I did it because it okay, came it's so okay. It's okay. Um, I'm gonna try to explain this to you guys. Um, we uh, have to change credit card companies. Um, we've been with HBCU or whatever, not HBCU, it's HBCU. <laughs> HBCU, I love it. I, this is what's on my mind, I love it. I love it. We should all know what HBCU is now. Um, yes. We should all know. So anyway, what's the name of the bank? That was funny. HSBC. HSBC, uh, we exactly. had to change credit cards uh, and they've changed the program that we had a credit card under. And um, so uh, we have to change. And so Jean got in touch with uh, the school board, the treasurer actually for the school who we jointly use. And she suggested that we try, she suggested <laughs> that she'd be happy to help us find a new credit card company um, that specifically lurks with government entities. entities. Uh, but that for her to do that work that our board had to pass a resolution giving her the permission uh, to do that work on our behalf or on our behalf that she will look for a credit card company that particularly works with um, government entities. And the credit line on that is uh, $10,000. So. Does anybody have any questions? Because I'm going to make a motion for this. Uh, this is just um, a logistical thing that we have to do. I do have a question on that. So, mm -hmm. and Chuck, you could chime in here as well. If we're looking for a new banking relationship, we may want to look for a bank relationship that has a credit card. <clears throat> so because okay. we have deposits going through there, they may give us better rates. They may give us a bigger credit line if we need it. Not sure if we do. But if we can coordinate that with our banking decision to make sure we have a, now I'm just telling you from my small business experience, you know, having a credit card company that you don't have your bank account with, they don't work with you as well as a place where you have your assets. Sure. That's where you have your money. So, okay, so there is one issue, and that is that Tom needs, um, Tom will no longer have a credit card on December 1st. So, <laughs> you know, for the library. So, um, you, you know, always, I, think, I mean, a credit card is not like a long range agreement. That's so true. If, if you do something near term, you know, you can always just yeah, change, right? Absolutely. Yeah. Okay. I agree with that. You're, you're 
advice makes sense. I think it's only because um, HSBC notified us with just a little over a month's um, notice that they were ending our current credit card plan and they would um, push it into a new plan in which it was a $250 fee per year, which is extraordinarily frustrating given that our banking, which totals over $5 million, doesn't seem to um, Right, that's when you should have those conversations like, you know, you know, we'll just move our entire account, which you're looking at anyway, you know, because usually sometimes the credit card isn't talking to the banking side. So they don't understand the relationship that you have. Traditionally. To, to be honest, Corey, HSB credit card in our bank never talked. And it was, um, we couldn't even, we couldn't even transfer money um, th through the bank. We had to kind of do a formal payment request, et cetera. It's, it's never worked terribly well. And, um, and, but I agree, this credit card arrangement could be a short-term relationship until we make a determination about our banking affiliation. I agree. I, I think that's the way to go as well. That's a good idea. All right, so, so, so then the motion changes a little. So it's, um, she's gonna look for a credit card um, for a short-term arrangement. Um, is that right? Is that, I mean, seems a little, is there any way you guys can do your thing soon? Because this seems a little. Well, can I can I add one seems silly. thought? I mean, mm -hmm. I think maybe that, I don't know whether the RFP for the banking thing can be accomplished by December 4th that soon, but as long as you're talking to the treasurer, maybe that we could do in something near term on the credit card, but maybe the treasurer could be helpful on the larger yes. issue because I assume, yeah. because I assume yeah. that they have the same Yep. You know, they, they obviously had to select a banking vendor and they're dealing, we're dealing with $5 million. They're dealing with, I don't know what the school Much more. budget is, but it's a lot more. So I, I would, and I would think that's part of, that actually might be part of the role of the treasurer, but maybe, maybe you guys have already had that discussion, but maybe, maybe the treasurer can be helpful on the other piece as well. Mm -hmm. yeah. All right. I think I, that's I, smart. I, yeah. I think Gene has broached the topic with our treasurer. I'm, I'm, I'm not quite sure what the answer was. I do know that she is extraordinarily busy with a lot of balls in the air, but it makes sense that our treasurer- Or they don't have to do it. It's more just like if they've got ideas or on you know who we should be talking to or whatever. Right. Just a thought. Right. Well, I did get um, an RFP from the, um, the city of New Rochelle, uh, Mark Zuli, who's the finance commissioner. He's terrific. He always answers my requests or questions quickly, sent us um, an example of their RFP now, I think that's a far larger, more complicated document yeah. than ours, but but it, it does have some content that we could probably model. But um, I'm more than willing to ask Jean, who really has a relationship with the treasurer, to see if, if she can insert herself and help us as well. So Thanks, I'm just Tom. gonna make, I'm just gonna make this motion. Um, so we're back to this motion. So, um, I'm, I'm making a motion uh, that we give the treasurer for the school district um, the authority to look for a uh, credit card short term on our behalf um, that uh, Tom will have a credit line, $10,000. Um, and we authorize her to do that, you know, look for something for us. So that's, can I get a second? Second. All in favor? Aye. Uh, okay. Aye. Okay. Don't spend it all. all in any place, opposed? Tom. So here's what I asked, though. Wait a minute. Now. Okay. That, that's so not here's part what, of the motion. Here's what I asked. So I'm going to sign this resolution for her tomorrow, but I'm going to leave it there. And now I want to put this in Corey and Chuck's lap. And if you could just follow up and you know make sure that um, if she does know of a place that we should be banking, that we find that out. Um, and that this is in fact a short-term thing that you do kind of go down the avenue of maybe the folks that we're banking with need to be giving us our credit card. Yeah, okay. Okay, okay. Um, let me see, personnel, policy, there's no report, special projects. Corey? So uh, yes. right now we, we don't have a report on the uh, courtyard project and we don't have anything on the land of enchantment 
Um, but we did make some headway. I think the last meeting we discussed was what's happening in the parking lot and the development that RXR was doing in that space. And so from our last conversation, I uh, raised my hand to initiate a conversation with Louise at uh, the development department in New Rochelle. Upon reaching out to him, uh, along with Chuck, we were able to have a sit down with him and really position it more of not looking to sell the library or anything to that respect, but looking at it as how do we work together um, because we think that we add value to what they're doing, which they actually agree to. You agree with that, Chuck? So yeah. that was a really good conversation. We we talked about a couple of things. You know, one of the things that Louise did mention was, were you guys interested in moving to the armory? And we, Chuck and I both said, that's not even an option. You know, we're just having a conversation. So what we did discover through that conversation, through that meeting was RxR has, doesn't really want to develop that space without working with us. They'll do it if they have to, they would prefer not to. So upon learning that information, we are going into another meeting tomorrow and just doing more of a discovery on, you know, um, how we're doing, how they're doing, and you know our position and more of them investing to help the library, you know, uh, become better, and not us selling to our sorry, just to be clear. So that's kind of where we are. We have a meeting tomorrow afternoon, and we'll update after that meeting. Any questions? Happy to answer. have any questions i don't have any questions i just i just think it's always good to be in dialogue so yeah yeah i mean i think we're we're ahead of the uh the development schedule which is what we were talking about before right so now yeah. we're in the pre-development what do we want to do how are we going to do it and we want to talk to you guys before we do anything which is mm -hmm. way better than you know um, them just doing stuff and we're like, oh man, you know, how do we fend for ourselves? Okay. That's it. Good. Um, well, wouldn't you know it, that is uh, the end of our, our portion and we can open it up to public discussion now. I think we have um, three people um, so if you'd like to talk, can you either raise your hand or say it in the chat? Marjorie's here and um, two other folks. Sorry, Marjorie, I kind of added you. But it doesn't even look like anybody wants to talk. All right. I will assume unless somebody puts something in the chat or raises their hand that no one in the public wants to say anything. I think this is actually a first. All right. Okay. <laughs> All right. Uh, does anybody have anything they'd like to add? Um, or before, before I adjourn? I, I would like to add and acknowledge um, and wish uh, a fantastic retirement to Barbara Davis, uh, yeah. good friend of ours, and, um, you know, wish her well, and we hope that she keeps in touch. Awesome. I agree, and, and Roxanne Mapp, who also contributed uh, greatly over the years, um, we're losing two bellwethers um, to our library. And um, they all sound like they have really wonderful next chapters, but you know, their experience will be missed and as you know, as their work and their persona. 
So well done, congratulations. Congratulations. Oh, I do have one last thing. I do have one last thing, I'm sorry. We had talked about doing a Zoom. We had talked about at the last meeting, being able to do a hybrid Zoom. Uh, some of us will be in Zoom and some of us will be in uh, the building. Uh, we didn't have the technology just yet this month, but we will next month to do that. So um, we can plan depending on how everything is. Obviously, who knows? Uh, we, we might actually, some of us might be there if we want to, um, but we will definitely make it an option for folks to be on Zoom if they prefer that. And with that, I would like to uh, move that we adjourn this meeting. Can I get a second? Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Anybody opposed? <laughs> this meeting is adjourned. You guys all have a wonderful, Thank you. Week. Thank you. wonderful Thank weekend. Thank you too. See you next month.